everybody, welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. Once again, I'm Osmo Kitty, joined with Frodan. That was an exciting series. It was a great series, man. I'm all amped up. <laughs> also, that. also just, an exciting dance. <laughs> just so, so many shenanigans <laughs> happening today, man. Just between all of the crazy card combinations, Prophet Valen going to town, uh, C and Shock to be able to aggro people out the wall, and then, uh, or off the wall, rather, and then we see Lead Paint with his crazy deck somehow getting all the way to the finals. Whoever wins the next three games, or sorry, the first to win three games in this next series comes to the land finals. I'm actually uh, incapable of casting because of my excitement level right now. I'm highly an eloquent. Yeah. Also because I eat a bunch of cashews, so there's a lot of... Uh, You're all hyped up on natural fats. Yeah, exactly. The polysaturated and monosaturated fats. Indeed. Well... I mean, okay, so Chalky has three aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. And Lead Paint has three interesting decks. So this matchup is going to be really crazy. And this is, um, I mean, I won't be sad if either of these players make it to the land finals. Because both these guys um, have super interesting personalities as well as play styles. Chalky was at the Legendary Season 1, Legendary Series Season 1 land finals, where he took second place. And uh, he did it with, with, with style. I mean, he brought Face Hunter, which uh, is Chalky's own style. Lead Paint uh, has qualified twice for the Legendary Series Open this season. So both That's these right. guys... That's two chances. Two well, chances. he might not need that. He might not need it. Might just need one. So both these guys have really cool stories to get where they are today or right now. And both these guys really have a lot to gain from this. Chalky's still looking for his, his uh, tournament victory. He has the forever second curse... But one thing you gotta like about um, Chalky is that he is the only one to bring Rogue today. Yeah. Right? Everyone it, else has been gravitating toward this uh, Warlock and Druid and and Hunter and Warrior combinations. Yeah. And it, it's not just like a standard oil Rogue. I mean, this Rogue is... It's, it's like not much that I've seen before. It's not like super aggro with like Argent Squires and mm -hmm. Cold Blood. Yeah, it's true. It's It's... Very combo oriented, I suppose. It's just got a lot of straight up damage. Lots yeah. of really efficient straight up damage. Arcane Golem, Cold Blood, Double Shadow Step, um, Eviscerates, but he also has like oil with South Sea Deck Cans, Blade Flurry. It's just like things that do damage, period. Yeah, exactly. And it's worked out for him. In the first matchup that he played, it was sort of a liability. It took him three chances to win. And uh, in the second matchup, he faced off against Handlock and Let's actually uh, took a pretty good victory. We are going to jump into the first match. It's going to be Lead Paint on the Control Warrior, and Chalky is going to be throwing out the Face Hunter. Yeah. All right, well, he's got uh, an early curve. You want to hit that turn one drop, which is really important. And the thing about this deck is that you have to curve out really aggressively against the the, hunt, the Warrior, and he has to be whiffing on his, on his draws off his weapons. Uh, I guess he's contemplating whether or not it's... Oh, wait, never mind. It might be a spectator bug. Yeah, it is. It's like I was evaluating the, the coin being played. All right. So now that he has the weapon here, a couple options. Mad Scientist, Honey Creeper, both two drops. And um, he does have the weapon. He even showed it. Yeah. Mad Scientist is more damage. And, of course, uh, you get ahead of your opponent by playing the Abyss of Sergeant so you can get the damage with the Battle Cry and the body. And it makes it so you're guaranteed to have a creature on the board next turn, even if he swings with the axe and has something like a Cruel Taskmaster. So it's like the most efficient way to put on consistent damage. Which is what Face Hunter is all about. Efficiently going to the face. He killed the, the Mad Scientist, which means that's Freezing Trap that's out, right? Uh, yeah. So if it's Freezing Trap that's out, his Acolyte's not really get, getting going to be able to attack, right? Wait, I think, it, yeah, Tarkis deck was running two Freezing Traps as well. I wonder if we can get a check on that from the Spectator, just to be sure. Do the magic wonders of Spectator Mode. Maybe not. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, dun, 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 dun. oh, no, it's Explosive. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I just need to finish the song. Okay, go ahead. That's, that's the song I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Chalky's deck was the one with explosives, and the hybrid mid-range slash face hunter was the one with the um, freezing traps. Evaluates, then decides to point his cursor at the face. And he's override the. Um, yeah. 
fire works here to kill off this load dead. And uh, draws a card. But he's under so much heavy pressure that Pilot Shredder is just nasty. And he's kept his Haunted Creeper as well for synergy with the kill command. So this is sequenced out pretty well for Jockey so far. Armorsmith is a pretty significant draw, though. Yeah. Especially since he has lower drops here to be able to supplement the Armorsmith. That's right. Uh, if he so chooses. And uh, this is a pretty decent hand for Control Warrior in general. Mm -hmm. in space He's got a lot of things to do, a lot of low, low drops early on. He's been able to draw cards pretty efficiently with the uh, Acolyte of Pain. He's not very healthy, but he does have reliable ways to gain health. With the shield Is that block what you say? Episode. If uh, someone has high... I guess so, they're healthy. He's healthy. Yeah, it's just kind of like weird. I never really thought about calling it that, you know? Yeah. He chooses not to drop the Armorsmith either before attacking into the Acolyte. Ah, that's pretty, pretty annoying. <laughs> Literally. I mean, it's really not that annoying. I don't know how else to interpret it. Metaphorically <laughs> annoying? <laughs> Double literally. Literally. I think that's actually pretty good. The Neutron? Yeah. Well, it's great he for Chalky. He can't, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I guess he can hide things behind it, but he can gain more health the Armorsmith. His Armorsmith is protected. It's going to survive that's even true. after the Neutron. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, not, it's not much damage. I'm just really, I think a lot of these small things, if Lead Paint ends up losing by one or two damage, I think a lot of these small things could be slightly optimized even better, which uh, leads to, you know, maybe turning the point of the game. If you ever look at, in terms of whether or not sequencing things like really truly matters, you have to really evaluate these type of games on both ends. Is Chalky squeezing out as much damage as possible? Is Lead Paint letting any damage come in that he didn't need to? Yeah. Or even on the opposite end, not even gaining enough health, uh, which he could. Four uh, and 13. has 17 health right now. He's got four, nine, ten. Ten damage at the moment. So he's going to seven off. He's going to be whiffing on a lot of uh, damage unless he can draw into better cards in the next couple of turns. Mm -hmm. And of course, you always want to weave. Face Hunter, you always want to weave in hero power, even if you have opportunities to put up more damage. It's because mm -hmm. the damage from your hand is sort of guaranteed. Right. But the damage from your hero power, you have to look at like. It's like drawing another card. Yeah, right. exactly. Like every turn, you get a card in your hand that costs two mana that deals two damage. You'd rather do that, that disappears at the end of the turn. So you'd rather use that card um, than opposed to another card that would do almost the amount of damage, but it's still going to be there. No. Shield Maiden, pretty impactful at this point. Going up to 19 health. This is starting to get farther away from what Shaki was wanting to, uh, where it wanted to gravitate towards. Lothab instantly gets challenged by the Shield Maiden, but the good news is that uh, it does shut down a lot of these spells. Well, in this case, spell from Lead Paint. Yeah. Shaki's sort of running oh, out wait. of juice. They're still at Explosive Trap, too. Okay. Hasn't been popped this entire game. And a second shield maiden. <laughs> that is devastating. All right, well, back up to 22. He ended this turn with more life than he ended the last turn. Lead Paint just refuses to die with his warrior deck. Yeah. He is a survivor, indeed. Just came in. Hey, Lead Paint. Saw you discard that soul fire twice. <laughs> Get out, Mom. We've all been there. It mm -hmm. still hurts, man. Yeah. The wound is still fresh, and you're bringing it back. Yeah. Shame on you, TJ. For shame. The death bite to eventually just shut down this uh, last little token here. And play the Acolyte of Pain. I'm wondering if there's still a way you can turn this round, because he's surviving. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, as much as Chaki is still putting on pressure and Lead Paint has been surviving. Like, Lead Paint can't keep this up forever. Yeah. He's taking constant like, damage every turn. He needs to start piecing together damage himself. Right. And then he still has to worry about the explosive trap eventually. Mm -hmm. And Chalky's evaluating because, you know, does he have enough damage to attack now in case his opponent has Sludge Dodger and finish the game? Or does he wait for the bow charge so he can get an additional attack in? Mm-hmm. 
now it's it's sort of hard to for lead paint to set anything up either, because unless it's like an armor smith, mm -hmm. because he still has the explosive trap on the board. It's time for him to attack with the death bite as well, because the shield mage is going to die. I mean, he can set up Doctor Boom here. Yeah. Do you attack? Do you attack into it now, or do you just hold and wait for like Alex Shiraz? I think if the, you're going to attack in it this turn because you want to make Unleashed the Hounds weak. So you get rid of three creatures off the board. Mm. Your Sarah comes into hand. That's not terribly helpful. Yeah. Eight damage. It's maximum from the boom bots. All right. Well, <sighs> that's is that lethal? That's game. That's eight damage. But yeah. And eight health. And unfortunately, Lead Pain just couldn't hold on. The war is supposed to stop some of the aggro. Couldn't Every happen. strike from this point on is another chance that he can't win with something like the Dragon Warlock, which could hypothetically on paper be good against aggro, but one of the least consistent. Yeah. All right. Well, Chucky takes a game up in the series, finds a win with the Hunter, and Lead Paint, mm -hmm. he winced at the end there. He knew that that was really rough for him. The implications of that loss were pretty big. There was... Um, Specifically with Chalky's decks, though, the Hunter was the most refined aggro deck. If you look at the Zoo, it's definitely got some rough edges with some of the draws, and then the the Rogue is always just suspect to, <laughs> well, just not having the right thing. You have Cold Blood and a Wolf Rider against a Sludge Belcher, no sap. It's like, you know, you just completely lose all your momentum. Yeah. Uh, those things can happen. But this Hunter deck, getting it out of the way, somewhat inevitable, especially against decks like the Warlock. So I, I think the Hunter was going to grab a win somewhere down the road. It's just, you know, unfortunate that his the Warrior was the first to, to not hold the line here. He needed to definitely get on the board as soon as he could. Yeah. Every game that you can kind of get to, even if you're 30% chance, you just want to get another chance to, to roll to see if you can squeak out a win with that Warlock deck. Yeah, the Warrior deck for Lead Paint will probably be the one that he's going to find the win with the easiest. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going into a match where uh, it's either going to be Warlock or Rogue um, or Chalky. The Warlock deck could probably take wins against all three of these. No, it can, for sure. You have the tools correctly uh, for the scenarios. You know, and if your opponent's playing like a big charger, you can heal up, you can play the Mortal Coil. It's just that you really lack the counterattack. You don't really yeah. have the Molten Giants, so you can survive. But the question is, can you kill your opponent before they kill you? I guess a deck like Rogue and the Warlock, yes. Um, Lead Paint really needs to win this because I think his best chance is shutting down the Zoo aggro, in fact. But if you go up against Rogue and they able to take out a win too, I mean, it, there's so many times where you just need more chances to win because the Druid doesn't draw correctly. You don't get the Wild Growth. You don't get the Innervate. The Warrior doesn't get the weapons. Yeah. The Warlock doesn't get the correct curve, and Imp Gang bosses and show up till like the twentieth card in your deck, and you don't have you know plays except tapping early on. You're just gonna die. Mm -hmm. And Chalky has been capitalizing on this excellently, and he's gone back to his roots. A lot of times, Chalky just immediately switches it up. He plays like a super aggressive deck, and he plays a super control deck, and then he switches it up with some mid range. But today, Chalky has returned, and he is coming home. Return to his roots. The Prodigal Son returns. All we need left is him to play Raynan and a bunch of emotes be flung. and Just like old times, man. Yep. Angry Reddit threads. Oh, of course. That's the that's the dessert course. I casted that match. Oh, you did? That's right. The I NESL. That's where I got my Hearthstone Did you cast start. with like a Maz? Or? I believe I was casting with a Maz that, that week. It was either a Maz or possibly Dart. Those are my two... You're just name dropping. PIC, partners in crime. Back in the day. Coin knife juggler to just put on a little bit of pressure here, testing to see if he has a war axe, and if he doesn't, you can pretty much run with the game. And in fact, there is no fiery war axe. There is a shield stand for next turn. So that deals with it. At least he has removal for the knife juggler. Chalk in the meantime. <laughs> Not going to be slowing down anytime soon. Picks up the Void Walker, so he can pair that with a 2-drop or even tap next turn. There's a weapon. So that's good news. Death Bite, even more important, too, honestly, because Fire War Axe only deals with the first couple threats, but the Death Bite can really answer the mid-game threats. Things like the Haunted Creepers also get swept in by the, uh, by the Whirlwind effect. Yeah. Also takes out an in-gang boss pretty effectively as well. 
There's the axes. Came a couple turns too late, but I don't think Lead Paint's in a terrible position at the moment. Uh, this, this, the Warlock deck from Chalky, though, has a lot of, like, back-end burst. It's really weird. It runs double right. Dark Bombs. It runs double Soul Fire and double Arcane Golem. And double Power Overwhelming. So even like if you it. manage to chop through... Does like he have, like, an Emperor of the Warzone in there? That'd be sick. It's possible. Maybe a Faces Manipulator. That'd be awesome. Just I don't like even know Zook. if he needs that. Just like, zoo combo. Zoom. No, I know. It, he probably doesn't do that. If you're going to do that type of OTK, then you might as well just go for the straight-up draw and yeah, heal. The other end of the spectrum. Type. But uh, it'd be really funny if he had, like, just ridiculous amounts of damage. <laughs> In reality, this deck seems like it usually wins games before we even get so to the point where you could even Baseless Manipulator Power Overwhelming Arcane Golem. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like Chalky's been putting these players on, like, a nine-turn, eight, eight or nine-turn clock with most of his decks, with all of his decks. Defender is the highest value play. He put out four or five worth of stats. Void Caller is just awkward, even though it does, uh, you know, discourage the death by from getting full value. In this case, a lot of clears. Taskmaster and the Fiery War Axe re-equip. Sending up his way for to have a really strong play to set up a good six mana cost minion. Mm -hmm. Both is not a bad draw at all. Although now that he just played his death bite, implosion and the void walker is also on the board for availability. Yeah, I might like implosion better considering how death bite was just used. Mm -hmm. And since there's Four. not, and since there's not a likelihood mm. that spells will come down, even though Lothep's body's fantastic, five five for five mana is great. It could also be a card that protects a large board from something like a brawl. Yeah. So it has a lot more uses later on, whereas implosion on a two health target is actually a pretty good time to use it because you're guaranteed to kill. I don't mind Thor's in here because. No. Shield Maiden gains the life, sure, but you don't have Shield Slam. Emperor Thorson makes everything else cheaper so that in the following turns you can squeeze it out because in turn 7 it's going to be equally difficult. You have Shield Maiden and something else like Execute, which you don't even know if you want to use if he doesn't have like a legitimate big target. So putting the Emperor Thorson makes it a lot cheaper. You're going to be, your opponent wants to trade down it anyways. And you only have 4 cards, so realistically you're not going to try to benefit off of it with insane mm -hmm. synergy like Oh, your Sarah executing weapon, you know, like you're not gonna be able to get too many cards drawn. Um, so I think it's okay here. And at six mana, you're not gonna die. The Shield Maiden is like if you want to bait out a bunch of attacks first, and then Emperor Thorson can come down uncontested, and then he gains you multiple uh, turns of reduced cards. But that's still rather optimistic. Not to mention, what if you draw another Shield Slam and you need to use the Shield Maiden? Yeah. So, the, I mean, there are pros and cons of this. I mean, if his opponent didn't have the, the Iron Bee Gowl, I think I would definitely say that this is this could be the best play. Yeah. Well, he's going to throw down the Void Walk into Lothab, but I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. Lothab's going to get traded into, but I guess it takes it's an effective way to take out the um, the Shield Maiden. But okay. I mean, what Shield Maiden also does here is... Um, just basically buy him the time that he needs so he can figure out a win condition too. Acolyte of Pain, hopefully he draws a lot of cards, but looks like he won't be drawing any cards. Unless Chalky decides to save that owl for the, the Sludge Belcher, that's also possible. Might even be better. Yeah. He can even throw a Dark Bomb at it if he wants to deny multiple draws. Right. Yeah, and keep as much power on the board. Yeah, because eventually the owl, or, or you can even just use abusive charge into attacking into it. Eventually, the owl yeah. could be more effective damage than what you'd throw into the. It's just that uh, you get more repetitive damage by one. Yeah, which doesn't seem high impact, but until it comes to the very threshold of the game, remember Strafko was off by one damage zoo against warlock or zoo against warrior. Yeah, and it's like you always underestimate the power of one damage until you need it the most. Mm -hmm. So let's see how much damage you could do. Yeah, if Lead Paint throws his Grom into the, um, the Imp Gang boss, the Imp Gang boss, there'd still be six, six power left on board. Four. Oh no! Well, this takes off more power. Five. Yeah. Five, nine, twelve damage. Mm. Not there. Yeah. 
Oh. oh. <laughs> now we can do. Now can you do sixteen? Is that true? I think so. Five, nine, two. He can. That's exactly sixteen. <laughs> and there's no way. Can will can Jockey, you avoid three in a row? Well, will Chalky discard the Soulfire? Yeah, but will this happen three times in a row when Soulfire just needs to not discard the Soulfire? Can science be debunked? Well, better yet, is will Lead Paint? No, he goes for the security of mine. He got both. Oh, wait, he did. He got he both. most of it. And Lead Paint's like, why can't that happen to me? No. Uh, justice. <laughs> Once upon a time, the scientists thought the world was flat, TJ. And up until today, I thought Soulfire always discarded the other Soulfire, but it turns out dreams can come true. Jockey is up 2 0. But, you know, that was a lot less funny if it happened the third time. Yeah. I would have been rolling on the floor laughing, as the youngins say. Scientists are writing up a new law now called the Law of Lead Paint. It, it's, a, it's a corollary, I think. It only happens to, to, to lead paint, apparently, and no yeah. one else. Exactly. Well, we might get an opportunity to see it, or Chucky might just steamroll 3-0 against his best anti-aggro deck. Warrior is supposed to be one of the best equipped control classes mm -hmm. to disarm the aggressive archetype, but it hasn't been successful at all. Like, what's been yeah. going on? Chucky's been eating warriors for breakfast today with well, these aggro I mean, decks. It's, it's almost dinner time, so I think he needs to, you know, Get a bigger fork and spoon because you don't you don't really breakfast for dinner. You're gonna have a big meal coming up here in the finals. Indeed. Well, he has three chances to find a win with the rogue. He has to either be warrior, dragon, warlock, or druid. Can he do it? Uh, with the rogue deck, that's the big limiting factor here. I mean, don't be surprised to see the rogue deck drop a couple sets here. Then we go to game five. It, it would ha almost certainly be sequenced like the warrior. Druid Warlock? Maybe the Warlock is slightly better. Yeah. Against Rogue. It's happened in the past. Chucky, in his first match of the day, lost two of his games with the yeah. Rogue and ended up coming back with a close win in the very last series. So it's going to be tough. This is the deck that has the most liabilities included in its sort of win conditions. It's at least consistent. Well, we're going to see Rogue once again. Chucky, the only person to bring Rogue today. The only person to bring Rogue so far. Although, GTT Turth also is one of the few people to bring Priest. Yeah. I mean, everyone's gravitating towards this Warrior and Warlock, Hunter and Druid setup. More Druids today than yesterday, though. But plenty of Warlocks and Warriors. Yeah, yesterday was not, was not a very diverse field of decks. No. Today's been a bit better. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, though. Tomorrow we have a couple of uh, you know specialists. We have Silent Storm, who always throws in kind of wacky stuff. And Roger's a guy who's like... Like, Roger might be willing to play the classes like Sham. The Taiwanese are always interesting with their, with their choices. <laughs> yeah. Silent Storm's been known to... Also, Dom just likes Paladin. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen really Paladin so far this week. He had mild success with it in his Legendary Series week. Yeah, average result, middling results. Mm -hmm. All right, Lead Paint going to start off. Oh, Coin Armorsmith into Armorsmith and the Acolyte of Pains on turns two and three. Chalky in the meantime, very awkward hand. This is something that we might see a couple games this Rogue struggling with to get going. Mm -hmm. But don't underestimate it. It's just that the double armor smith start is really hard to get over. Yeah, it's one of the best anti-aggro starts. Yeah. Sludge Belcher as well. I mean, he has double armor smith into Acolyte of Pain into Despite. Like, that's one of the... Mm. Into Sludge Belcher. That's a really strong start. Yeah. I guess you can just play the Auto Barber here. Yeah. Would you attack into one of these 1-4s? I think so. If only he had Deadly Poison. If he had Deadly Poison, he would have attached to this weapon and uh, have four damage and kill off one of the one fours. Yeah. I mean, this is effectively trading. I mean, this could effectively trade two for one. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have a way to deal with this on this turn and then attacks in with both of these. He's going to gain a lot of health, but they are going to go down in flames. 
Goblin on a barber. M MVP. Mm. Cole is interesting. Considering that uh, it enables your opponent to draw a lot. And control decks always want to draw cards. Now, ooh, let's see. You can shadow step this. And you can even force the opponent to draw a lot. No, it's only going to draw like eight or nine cards max. Okay, there's really no point then. So he shadow steps it and holds and passes over the turn. What do you think about that, TJ? <laughs> it's quite interesting because if he was denying draw, then he wouldn't have cold light or cold in the first place. Well, no, he doesn't want his opponent to draw. Well, he doesn't want to play anymore and then let his opponent draw even further. If you play yeah. it one more time, his opponent wouldn't even have milled any cards. He would have had nine cards in his hand. Yeah, and also... Or ten, because he would have attacked with the Acolyte. Yeah. And also there's a small advantage for drawing cards on your own turn, as opposed to drawing cards in your opponent's turn. Oh, there's a large advantage. You get to set up the threat first. If he yeah. picked up, you know, if he's playing that spider, or he's, he needed a four drop, Yeah. he could set it up so that way he curves into it much better. So giving him more draws and potential for draw on his own turn right. is riskier than just holding onto the Cold Light Oracle and giving the draws on your own terms. Drake backstab just to remove the Acolyte. Lead Paint has removal onto the Drake, but pretty decent start once again for the Warrior to stabilize from any early game aggression. Yeah, he's got a lot of health to get through as well. But... We've seen before that this rogue deck has just cons once it gets to the late game, you can start piecing together combos, even just like two card combos, like the Tinker Sharp Blood Oil with uh, South Sea Deckhand or uh, like Arcane Golem with Cold Blood. He can start piecing together lots of damage once right. you get to those turn eight, turn nine uh, areas. Evaluating if he can go for the Colite Oracle just to draw is still a little bit awkward. Second Blade Flurry now is useful. Now the oil is really potent because he has a South Sea deckhand. Yeah. That ends up I mean, if you blade flare, that's end up being like 13 damage. Yeah. Two eviscerates. I mean, Tinker Sharp Soto could also be comboed with even more expensive things later in the game as well. Yeah, he's got two eviscerates, which is 21, and then two Arcane Golem hits is 29. And despite all that, his opponent would still be okay. Because he has 38 health plus ways to gain even more. Yeah. He's got Shield Block, Sludge Belcher. Each of those are effective uh, health gains that Lead Paint's going to be uh, putting on. Chalky's in a really tight spot. He might feel like uh, he has to remove this 2 2 just to protect his uh, investments onto the board because he definitely wants it to stick. But the important thing is how he generates damage outside of what's in his hand. Because if he puts out all of his hand damage, like say he's allowed to play that in one turn, which he isn't, but if he was able to, it's still like 8 to 10 points short. He'd be short. If every single card in his hand costs zero mana. Right. What now? Uh, he'd still be short, even after trying that many cards. I mean, we can't count him out yet, but... No, no, no. He's not, he's not out of it. It's just like a long journey. Yeah. This game has slowed down considerably. Deadly Poison is really powerful, though. Because that like, adds another 4 damage. Uh, but the Sludge Belcher is really problematic. How do you get past this thing? Alright, so we can use... Deadly... No. All the damage that he's going to pump into this is really weird. He has to like use his South to see deck cans. Mm. If he wants to. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm looking at a bl using one of the Blade Flurries here. Yeah. So if you use Deadly Poison, attack... Uh, it's awkward. What about using Eviscerate instead? Um, South Sea Eviscerate. Hit, hit the width weapon, attack, and re-dagger. Mm -hmm. That might be a play. Yeah. If you use that, one South Sea is gone, so you, but you still have another one. And you'd still hold on to oil in that situation. You'd still hold on right. to Blade Flurry, which aren't as flexible as Eviscerate later on in the game. He needs to go soon, just because the Sludge Belcher animation, I'm always afraid of it. So if it's South Sea Eviscerate... He's keeping cool under pressure. Doing chalky uh -oh. things. Did he get it? 
I don't think so. Or did he? Okay, we got the weapon reef dagger. That's the important thing. No! Wow, oh, he missed the attack. So now that it gets picked off, that slime is really annoying. Back to work. Hmm. Didn't make his turn quite quick enough. Job's done. Granted, it was a tough turn, but... It's still, it's still a pretty big deal, because now it's not a direct damage shot. Sap. He's also starting to take some damage on the on the backside as well. I mean, he's at 19 health. That's true, but it's like that's something that you can't really consider too much until it's like the very, very end stages of the game. Yeah. Health is one of your greatest resources as a when you're playing an aggro deck. Hmm. Let's count again. Salisley Deckhands 2. Uh, Deadly Poison Tinker Towns is another 6. Uh, Blade Flurry is another 6, so that's uh, 18 plus this 8 from the Arcane Golem Shadow Step. It's only 24 damage. Yeah. Or 20, 26 damage. Especially since no matter which way he slices this, he's sort of has wasted damage. Because he has to use the, the two extra damage from the dagger just to attack into a slime. Why did he attack into the slime? Am I missing something? He had to. What uh, What other way would he have had to clear it? Oh, right, because uh, he loses charge on the yeah. on the South Sea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you know, people always forget that sometimes. Yeah. It's uh, it, only, it, it only has charge if you have a weapon. If you, it's not like Warsong Commander, where where like once it's given charge, it's just given charge. It has charge as long as you have a weapon. Yeah. There's been a lot of clips. On uh, Reddit and otherwise, like of yeah. people thinking they have lethal using Blade Flurry before they attack it with the South Sea deck. Oh, the good old days of Forsen. <laughs> I wasn't naming names. Definitely were some fond times. Mm -hmm. Well, he's starting to pump out some damage here, but I mean, he's he's empty through his whole hand, and that was a double Cold Light Oracle hand. And now he's just right. left with Arcane Golem Shadows to Eviscerate, which is 12 damage from hand. But Light Paint's still at, what was that, 25 health? Something like that. 25 health. Can he even play Ysera? Very vulnerable to Sap. Yeah, it's a little greedy. Emperor Thorson is the safer play because you can still armor up. Yeah. The whole point is um, you run your opponent out of damage in this matchup sometimes as the warrior. Yeah. So Emperor Thorson reducing everything. Lead paint is uh, looking to climb back right now, but Chalky doesn't really have enough damage even to remotely contest it. He doesn't have anything to be afraid of. Even 8, 11, f uh, 15 damage right now. Yeah. That's what he's got. 15 damage. Even if his, the Shadow Step Arcane Golem survived and he got to swing again next turn, he would still only have 23 damage and it wouldn't even kill him. Right. And that's if lead paint literally just passed the turn next turn. It did absolutely nothing. So he's going for it now because he needs to get that damage in. Um, no point in keeping it on the board, though. I wonder if he's going to play it now or just save the, the Arcane Golem. Oh, he's going to play it now and use the Sap to try and protect it, but it's not really going to do much in the ways of that. Right. Puts it down to 13. And, I mean, it's, he still put out a good amount of damage. He's out of cards. He is out of cards, and his opponent has Shield Slam to deal with this. He needs, like, Cold Light Oracle into massive amounts of direct damage right. next turn. Just plop Thorson again in the, the draw. Ysera, doesn't matter. Pick your choice of weapon here. I mean, Cold Light Oracle into Arcane Golem Cold Blood is lethal. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Yeah, because he would have had three damage from Dagger. Cold Light Oracle draws two cards. Mm -hmm. can play Arcane Golem. Uh, cold Blood and Eviscerate for 12 damage. Still with a couple mana to spare. <coughs> but it's a very unlikely scenario. Sure. But it is something to point out that Chucky, is, even through all this, has put himself in a position to win the game. Right. And that, is that game? Yeah. Grom, Ysera, Awakens, 15, 19. All right. Well, 
Lead Paint finally gets onto the board, but if he couldn't win against this rogue deck, then uh, it just wasn't in the cards for him, mm -hmm. or in the stars, or I guess cards works too. Yeah. But you know, this is one of the best decks against a deck like the rogue. So we were expecting this, and Jockey was somewhat expecting this too. I think that's why he's not really uh, unhappy. But you know, he still got to win against the Druid. He still has to win against the Warlock, and I liked Jockey's chances still coming from this point on. Yeah, having. Three opportunities to win with even your weakest deck still gives you a uh, high chance to to win the series. Um, I can imagine that Lead Paint's going to try and save this Warlock for last because I think that's probably going to be one of the toughest. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see him queued up right now. I think Druid is pretty reasonable in terms of like how it fares against it. There's a lot of uh, the small minions you can Wrath, uh, a lot of the one health, you know, loot hoarders and the Wolf Riders you can swipe. Uh, so I, I liked going for Druid, but eh, at the same time, I, I, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. You just have to just go for whatever you feel is best. He's also put the Warlock in timeout. Yeah. For disobeying him. I mean, the thing is, Lead Paint, that is like his claim to fame. If, people, if he makes it to the finals here, people are just going to remember his Warlock deck. More importantly... What didn't happen with the Warlock deck, yeah. which is two Soul Fires hitting. <laughs> and then if he back makes to back. if he makes it to the Legendary Series Land Finals with a victory in this series, and then doesn't bring Dragon Warlock, I'll be pretty sad. But people are gonna be outraged. I feel like he's also done this the last time we saw him in the, couple, in the past couple of weeks. He also brings like a an interesting take on decks. He's not afraid to shake it up. Yeah. Or shake it off. The, wow, that was a really good reference. Yeah. Good call since, back, TJ. Especially since you mentioned the Taylor Swift. Yes, exactly. It, no, especially. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well met. Throwing out the memes. All right, well, Chucky still one win away Ooh, from securing yes. a spot at the Legendary Series Land Finals. That is a really good curve. He's got three, four, five with innervates that can weave in. Lead Paint can also take his time to hero power down this loot hoarder. Ooh, he's got a turn three Thorson. If he heroes us down, turn three Thorson, he'll have a four mana Sludge Belcher for the following turn, and then he got a five mana uh, Shade and. Um, this the pilot shredder combination. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, Wild growth. Talk about making everything cheaper. Wow. Or easier to play. He's he's almost got it all. Chalky, of course, does have blade flurry. That's something that might be working in his favor here. Deadly poison, ticker sharp soil, as well as blade flurry. Right. So he can get past a huge wave of minions. And One thing that I love about Rogue, I just absolutely love, is the fact that above everything else, it has, like, no matter how aggressive or defensive it is, Blade Flurry is just ridiculous. It's borderline OP. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about it, what if I told you Flame Strike hit the face? Uh, Consecration That's for wrong. four mana does two damage to everything, and Blade Flurry for a combination of a few mana does even more than that. Plus, yeah. it scales like crazy. Yeah. That's true. It's a strong card. It's just nuts. Definitely not as consistent. Because you do have to have weapon buffs in order to be able to do that. Right. Um, and it is sort of slightly limited by taunt. But I do agree with you. Cool at Oracle. Uh, I think this is one of the key cards in the deck. Uh, a lot of in these aggressive rogue decks... A lot of times, since they don't have like natural draw mechanics, um, so right? They don't have a hero power that puts their opponent on the clock. They need cards like Cold Light Oracle to sort of have that longevity, have that reach. I just I feel like timing is just so hard to nail down sometimes with the Cold Light. If you play it too early, you end up gimping yourself. He just goes for the oil, straight up six damage. What's up? Hits the face. He's gonna flurry. And uh, just clear the whatever his opponent comes out next turn. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a pretty ridiculous start from Lead Paint. But I mean, Chucky's got 
near perfect answer for this. Late flurry and SI on the one two. Yeah. So he can free it up for his chargers. Kana Creeper is definitely annoying. Oh, I forgot about the God Water Bar. That's also a possibility. Good spot. And even more mana efficiency. Yeah. That's a lot of damage being piled on. Lightpaint's already at 14 health. He does have some ways to stop damage. He's got the second Sludge Belcher here. Yeah, second Sludge Belcher growth. with an Innervate. That's yeah. huge. He's got both Innervates and the Wild Growth to start things off. Chalky is pissed. You wouldn't guess it by looking at his face, but he's pissed. No oh! way! Wait, okay, hold on. It's still not time yet, though. You have to, you have to make sure to sequence this right. Sapping means he's going to play it anyways. You have six, eight damage right now. You might have to call it Oracle just to draw more. Yeah. But of course, so it comes down to the point much. where just having you might have, you might give him the combo. Next turn, you'll have eight mana. You can sap. You can play two of these minions. Sap, Arcane Golem, Wolf Rider. It'll be seven damage from the hand. Two from the weapon. It wouldn't be enough. Mm. You can use SI and the South Sea deck <laughs> hand as well. South Sea to the face. That is man mode. That paint has swiped, though. Oh, my goodness. Ancient of Lore. But, of course, you could say he, he top decked that. But it was also a lot to do with the fact that Chucky helped him draw cards. Yeah, with the cold light. Cash in on Sludge Butcher while he still can. Trades in. Cold Blood. 4, 8, 11, 15, 17 damage. If he was allowed to hit face with everything here for maximum mana, he would have had lethal. Yeah. And he's going to go ahead and clear off the Sludge Belcher. No reason to use a Sap, like you said. If you use a Sap, you're just going to play it anyway. And it's not going to be really going to be a turn here where you can Sap the Sludge Belcher and be able oh to push God. through. Here we go. It's cold blood to the face. Reattach the weapon in case he draws second Deadly Poison. This is getting really tense, but how much damage is on the opposite, opposite end? 5, 8. 12, 16 damage. It's not quite there. But, I mean, Chucky's on a draw or two here to close it out. Need, he's he's going to need some help, though, because if he, if he saps, he only has five damage. Do? And his opponent is almost certainly going to hero power here, right? Yeah. Like, it's your duty as a druid player to just keep hero powering as much as you can, gaining one life. Does he have any draws here? Where you can push through. He's gonna need six damage. I don't think so. Unless he's got a Leroy right. tucked in there. He wouldn't even have enough mana for that. Well, Ludhorder lets him get further, but he's dead next turn. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, swipe. The sap doesn't help him. Yeah, not even swipe. He can just keep I, her to I'm the face. I'm telling you, man, I really want to like this rogue deck. But if you want to play a, an aggressive rogue, it's like, it's just, you run into this risk every single time. It just sometimes comes up a little bit too short because of the inconvenience of how things have panned out since Nax Ramus, GVG, yeah. and all these other car expansions came out, which helped you handle aggro. Yeah. It'd be so crushing for Chagi to like try to bring something so new to the table again, having this aggressive rogue. And once it's, it's liable, right? His other series, the rogue ended up almost costing him the series. Mm hmm. Well, we're going to a game number five once again. Seems to be a trend today. It's been a long, intense day of Hearthstone action. But we're about to jump into the conclusion. Jockey versus Lead Paint, game number five. Well, just to taunt him, the, even the next card he drew would have been Azure Drake, so that would have been helpful to refill the hand, but not necessarily a guarantee for him to, to win the game off the lethal. So... Uh, that that deck is definitely floundering at this point, and it was very curious because I we've come down to these uh, two decks, which we were questioning which can beat the other. Um, it's hard to say, right? Because the Malikos version, I'm even more afraid because it's like, how do you how do you actually turn back and win unless your opponent just does not have the pressure necessary? Like if he doesn't have SIs on the board, and you don't have the Dark Bombs, you're just taking a lot of damage. And then if you ever try to play a Taunt. 
or a defensive card, he saps it and then he just kills you. Yeah. On the flip side, if you get the Twilight Drake and then Chalky just keeps taking damage and he's drawing his second Blade Flurries, he's drawing, drawing his uh, his backstabs and doesn't have any minions, it's very easy for Chalky to get the wrong half of his deck and then just does not have anything to play in a couple turns. Yeah. Well, this is super fitting for a game number five. Both of these guys, I mean, I guess we could call them signature decks. Lead paint with the Dragon Warlock. He's had some tough times with it today, but overall mm. it's been relatively successful. Chalk is already unhappy. doesn't have the coin. Yeah, that's actually pretty rough. And Mortal Coil, Dark Bomb, Farseer to start off the, the day here for Lead Paint. Winner takes all. Winner of this game goes on to the Legendary Series Land Final. Loser stays home. Unless it's Lead Paint, then he gets another try tomorrow. But that's 50% of his chances gone. <laughs> and that's brutal to have to play through two times. He's played a lot of matches. Group D is also really competitive. Yeah, super. That's your cue, TJ, to tell me who's in Group D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have it right from memory. Uh, Oskaka, Kaldi, Tom, Amaz. Yeah, those are players that you always see in tournaments. Yeah. Second Cold Blood, that's so much damage already. Yeah. He's got like a third of his opponent's life already in the books, in his mind. But he's, he's slowing down a little bit, and this gives an opportunity to set up the farce here. Oh, coin Twilight Drake. I mean, Ledbin, there's a lot of ways to stop it. He said, you talked about Mortal Coil and Earth Ring Farce here. Right. He's got Sludge Belcher plus Anti Kill Bot. I mean, he's got a lot of ways to just sort of stall damage. I think Chalky might just consider plopping down the South Sea and double cold blooding or something equivalent. Maybe one cold blood and re weaponing. He needs to just start putting damage out. Like, it's just too hard to ask to let your opponent seize the board and start putting too much pressure on. Yeah. So many options. Would you consider doing double cold blood? I think you sort of value redaggering here. Yeah. Just mixing it up. Yeah. Just because. This is the... Oh, wow. Okay, he goes for the trade. This is the most efficient use of, of damage. Because you're getting the extra damage from the dagger. Sort of similar vein to, like, Hunter. Yeah. But I think... Uh, this Drake is really important with the backstab. That's really huge. Oh, man, that's actually so huge right now. Because the Eviscerate will take care of whatever comes out next. And his opponent can't deal with it. But he's having to play like a control type style right. with this rogue deck, like trading in with the Saucy deck hand plus Cold Blood, and it's then if okay. he eviscerates his Azure Drake. Well, it's okay as long as he can leverage something on the board, right? The whole point of this, like the whole point about Rogue, is that its tempo is absolutely insane because of the combo mechanism. It allows you to grab like some serious tempo just through like removal of the board, and then you can usually push it. That's why Violet Teacher is like so amazing with it. But you know, Chucky's gone to just full on aggression. Like, this is a scenario where you have to weigh, do I play, like, Auto Barber, Eviscerate, and then Cold Blood my Drake and then hit the face? Like, that's the kind of stuff where you really have to start uh, reading your opponent. He didn't. He couldn't remove the Drake. He played his own Drake for an answer. I probably should try to see if I can push this Drake as far as I can. Mm -hmm. Cold Blood didn't do four damage anyways to the face. That's kind of the priority of it. Yeah. But then how do I deal with the, uh, the Azure Drake? <laughs> This guy's toast. Uh, you can use the dagger mm -hmm. and the uh, SI7 agent here, and he will be able to push for damage for this. This is a scary board. Oh, he didn't. He didn't use the cold blood. Right. He's still waiting to see his opponent's hand. He doesn't want to invest too heavily into it. He wants his opponent to really go hard into um, trying to play removal. Plus, right now it's like a hellfire mortal coil and cry. Like, wait and see what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> Drake mortal coil for two. Job's done. It's pretty good, but this Drake is pretty susceptible. A lot of spells for removal, though. Interesting. Shadow Step on the Drake would be pretty helpful to draw, draw a card, but it doesn't do much else. It just kind of fills out the curve, which you might need. Plus, it's a combo enabler, so that way Eviscerate can also be live. Hmm. Yeah. How much damage does he have right now if he Blade Flurries? He's got... 7, 9, 14, 18 damage. 
Whew. It's not enough. Not nearly enough. And that's such he can he can he can do that, but it costs his entire uh, mana as well. Yeah, and it also is like a real not an inefficient use of damage, but you can't just go all out like that. Mm -hmm. Especially since he needs to be able to handle this Azure Drake. He might go halfway and then shadow step the SI7 as they're attacking and then kill off the Drake. Yeah. This way he still preserves all the damage in his hand. Still no cold blood usage though. He's saving that for the, the he's, final he's burst. He's saving it for a big, tr yeah, to just surprise his opponent. He, the only time you'd use this cold blood is usually to get the charge damage, but if you can double dip, sometimes it's the game winning play. Mm -hmm. It used to be back in the day with cards like, you know, Arjun Squire, because you could get two attacks in. Yeah. But that was a long, long, long time ago. Super annoying. When I first saw this deck, I. I Actually, had guessed or presumed that it would have Arjun Squires, but we've seen that it doesn't. It's like more consistent damage, right. I suppose. Like more oriented towards mm -hmm. bursting out in the later stages of the game instead of getting off the crazy starts. Sure. Because he hasn't really had a crazy start like at all. Like none of his games, even the ones that he's won, his starts were pretty slow rolling. If there's a question of whether or not Drake's been worth it in this type of deck, some people always say, yeah, you top out on, like, the Chargers, right? But Drake's done three attacks so far. Yeah. It's 12 damage. He's, now he's, he's got his anti kill bot, he can... Yeah, he's got 13, 14 damage right now. He's still short by a considerable amount. But he's starting to wear him down. The and question is, how long will Lead Paint tolerate this Drake? I'm surprised he tolerated it for this long. I mean, right. He's Hasn't really soul -fired holding it. on to those soul fires. He's, he just really wants the opportunity to shut his opponent out. This might be it right here. The soul fire onto the Drake, which is pretty devastating. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! No I don't even get it at this point. It Someone is the from law. Blizzard. Someone is from Blizzard is watching Lead Paint's game pulling in real time. Pulling levers and just cackling. <laughs> and hard-coded. Like the actual law of soul fire. Lipin wasn't even surprised by that one. He's just no, like, he's not even phased. Uh, he's been desensitized. Yeah, I guess that would happen. This is what happens when you overplay the joke, Blizzard. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> Stop. You're making Dan angry. Okay, Drake is something. But he's going to need some help. It's 12 damage. Wow. 12 damage, and if he could get sap. 12 damage even gets sapped, so there is a realistic possibility here. But he might want to throw out this Shadow Step just to be able to get Another more draw. Card? Yeah. I don't know. If he gets sap, he has 13 damage right here. He's only got a couple turns to work with. Because he's going to start to take a lot of damage on them. Oh, it's so painful. Is he worried about dying? No, 7, 10. No, he can, he can definitely take a turn of punishment. This Drake is going to die no matter what, no matter how much he tries to protect it. Second Hellfire. It's not very useful. No, the Zombie Chow is not really that useful either. Implosion. Just kind of uh, doing whatever. Four is pretty annoying, though, just because uh, it's just more damage. It also sets up lethal yeah. next turn. So it's sap or nothing. This, this could be it. Could be it. Oh, my goodness. Cold Light into a sap? No. Loot Hoarder. And I think that's it. Wow! Is there any other way that he can draw a card? I mean, he can clear off the Sludge Belcher with Arcane Golem and Cold Blood, but is that... If he does that, he's pretty much... No, that's lethal anyway, because the Hellfires. Yeah, he's got six damage from hand. I don't think there's any way. This Loot Hoarder needs to be a novice engineer. And finally, it seems like we have uh, gotten our... Sixth player to land, DJ. Indeed it does. There's still a slight amount of hope here. Nah, it's about to get crushed. I think with these Hellfires, though. Seven damage on the board. Eight damage on the board. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Lead Paint's eyes get big. As soon as he passes over this turn, he throws his hands in the air. And Lead Paint is the sixth player to go to the Season 2 Legendary Series LAN Finals. Nice.
Well done, man. A really good set of games today. Chalky is devastated. Oh, man. And that the last card he would have drawn was the Colite Oracle. And once again, second place for Jockey in the Redemption Tournament means he is not coming back to the Season 2 Finals. Remember, Chalky also came in Season 1 Finals where he was able to uh, play second there. And it just seems to be coming up short every single time. Let me, in the meantime, the story's about him. Indeed. The story of how he keeps discarding his soul fires and despite having that inconvenience... <laughs> manages to win the day. What a well-played set of games. I've, I've really enjoyed today, TJ. This was, was a lot of yeah. fun. Three times in a row, uses Soulfire and discards his other Soulfire. Yeah. The first one, he was like, ah. The second one, he was like, ah. And the third, he was just like, okay. Yeah. That's... Yeah, it, it, it's what happens when you, you know, that, that's the sound of, of a horse yeah. that's dead mm -hmm. getting Soulfired. <laughs> <laughs> and discarding the other Soulfire. Yeah. Well, Lipin, that, that's what his sound was. Lipin will be joining us from the land finals. He's going to join Kalento, Life Coach, Kabi, Raynad, and of course, we saw um, last week Trump. And now Lead Paint. That's the six player lineup that's going to be at the land finals. Right. That is awesome. I'm not even going to lie. It's a good set of uh, storylines. I think Lead Paint has definitely put a lot of people on notice. I can't wait for the highlight reels where people kind of pick apart the fun moments of today mm -hmm. and show people the ridiculous nature of what we witnessed. But in case you guys didn't see it, let's go ahead and recap what happened today, TJ. Yeah. Wait, do we have, like, a video? No, no, okay. Okay, there's the bracket. Yeah, so... I got very confused for a to second To start there, things man. off, we had Chalky versus Bunny Muffins, uh, where Chalky was able to win. And then Lead Paint started off his rampage through Modern Leper, where we witnessed uh, some really close games back and forth, but that was the only series that didn't go the distance. Mm -hmm. Then Strife Code managed to beat Cross in a pretty tight set of games but was not able to defeat Lead Paint as uh, he went all the way, which means, TJ, people in Group D are rejoicing because yeah. Lead Paint, since he's qualified, does not have to play in the second try over in Group D. Yes, yeah, so that means Group D will only have six players, um, so at least one person will have to win one less game That's right. in order to get there. But I believe we do have an interview set up with our winner, Lead Paint. <laughs> So I we... have so many questions for this guy, man. All right. Hey, Lead Paint, <laughs> how's it going? Hey, man, fantastic. Hey, guys. First hey, off, dude, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, what, Thank what's, you. what's it like, you know, what's the feeling at the moment? Because you seem to be very expressive. This moment <laughs> must be really special for you. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling, feeling really good because um, now I don't have to play on Sunday. So, you know, I get to sleep like extra, which is fantastic. <laughs> That's I right. I value street sleep very high. <laughs> It's the Lord's Day, which you can make up to him, so that way your soul fire doesn't discard the other soul fire. Oh, that that hurt. Yeah, the, what was that like a one and eight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was okay. Three times in a row that uh, your soul fire discard the other soul fire. Actually, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that warlock? Like, where did that warlock come from? Uh, why did you decide to bring it? Give us a little bit more info about that deck. Well, um, I felt like that deck is was going to be really good um, in, in this format because I, I expected a lot of hand luck and. Um, Patron Warrior, and I like the matchup against both of those. I think, mm -hmm. I know it was a, a lot of people had a lot of success with it on Europe. I think it might be JJ's deck, or I saw JJ102 playing it quite a bit. But we, uh, me and a friend of mine made the change to it to um, put in the gang bosses over the technicians because it's, we think it's strictly better that way. And it's so much fun to play. And I figured, um, you know, I might as well bring Malagos to a tournament, you know. Someone's oh, yeah. got to do it. Really fun stuff overall. Who's the friend that you're practicing with, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Uh, the, the, a buddy of mine named Vank Swisher. He's uh, a really good deck builder and player. Awesome. Is he also on your team, or is it just a person that yeah, you're practicing yeah, he with is, well? Yeah, yeah. He's one of my uh, one of my teammates. Sick. He's a very strong player. Yeah. Have you ever been to Southern California? Um, not since I was like 10 years old. So it's uh, it's gonna be exciting. Gotcha. Where are you hailing from right right now? I am in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. <laughs> oh, I love middle of nowhere. It's beautiful <laughs> yeah. this time of year. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> That's great, man. Well, congratulations so much. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say, uh, you know, as a shout out to your team or your fans or anything specific before we let you go? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just shout out to Casey Tron uh, for supporting me <laughs> and uh, the, our team, the Grand National Champions, and everyone who's cheered me on along the way. You know, thanks, guys. Alrighty. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very looking much. Looking forward to seeing you, man. Congratulations once again, and well played. Thank you. Take care. What a cheery guy, man. Yeah. I love the players that make it through their open. 
Yeah, and, and because you, they you can emotional. see they appreciate it. Yeah. You know, guys like Strifeco have been there for a long time. Uh, it'll be one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, I'll just play, and then I'll get on the plane and fly to another event. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not that they're unappreciative of it. It's just that, you know, they have a lot to do, and they're very busy because they're in such high demand. But for guys like Lead Paint, this is the opportunity to really put themselves on the map. Uh, really fun decks, good play, and something that, you know, people, these are a memory, an impression on people. That's really powerful as we start seeing more of his team, which maybe we'll be able to see his other teammates. And then finally, there's another team that's joining, you know, Cloud9, Archon, Nylum, Temple Storm in terms of the top teams in Hearthstone. Yeah, he actually has a chance to become a real Grand National Champion <laughs> sure. indeed for his team. Sure. Of course, he'll be joining us at the Legendary Series Land Finals. And that Land Finals where we're going to fly 16 players out would not be possible without our sponsors. Big shout out to them, Plantronics and Gigabyte, uh, for making everything we do just even more cooler, including all of the commercials. So if you want to support what we do with the Legendary Series and uh, support what we're going to do with Hearthstone uh, in the future, make sure you head to those links below, maybe get some Plantronics headsets, some Gigabyte motherboards, upgrade your gear with some sweet yep. sponsor swag. Yeah, actually, I built the PC and I have a Gigabyte motherboard. Turns out that was the best one to use, so mm -hmm. yep. who knew? And uh, with that is a really good way for us to talk also about the social media. Let us know what you guys thought, too, at ESL Hearthstone, hashtag HLS, and also talk to other people about uh, what's going on. For example, next week, we're also having the open last call qualifier, Indeed. TJ. Yeah, the last chance qualifier, it's only open to North American players uh, because we actually have eight spots from that last chance qualifier that will get directly seeded into the Legendary Series Land Finals. Flown out here, uh, all expenses paid trip. And uh, since it's so close to the Legendary Series Land Finals due to flight and visa restrictions, right. uh, only North American players would be able to get here in time for the event. So, so it's to give out the championship points, Indeed. which uh, require eight players open, eight through the invites, uh, and lead paint, of course, winning another invite <laughs> yeah. through the qualification <laughs> process. A little, a little backwards there. But uh, we've had a lot of fun today. Is there anything else we really want to say, TJ, before we let everyone go and tell them about tomorrow? Uh, I think we want to take one more look at the bracket. Okay. Um, just to, uh, for those of you who didn't join us before the interview, to see what actually happened over the course of the day. Uh, Lead Paint, of course, you can see the champion. We saw Chalky, Bunny Muffins, Modern Leper, Lead Paint, Cross, Strife Grow, and GCT Turth battle out. We had a lot of 3 twos today. It was really long, really intense. Yep, only 1-3-1. One, one. That was Modern Leper series to start off the day. Yeah, and it was uh, definitely really exciting. So, again, thank you guys for tuning in, for myself, from Frodan, from everybody here at ESL. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.